It's like 9.5 to 10 good. Because I think that's what people want to see, though, is like... They want to see the characters they play. They want to see the characters they maybe grew up with. But they want to see them in more of a lively fashion. A show where they're conversing and, and doing things. You know, not just in a video game punching shit. When you can successfully take characters that typically don't have a lot of personality being shown or just not enough of them is in that that game or that story, whatever it may be, and you can fully flesh them out and put them on the big screen, whether it's a movie or a game or something that just does them justice to the lore and um, just makes them seem more alive, you know? That's huge, man. That's badass. Pros, thank you, man. That shit is so cool. Well, it hits different from a League perspective if you know everything, but if you don't, you can still enjoy it. It was that good, right? It was a show that was based on something where even if you didn't know the content it was based on, it was still very fucking good. That's when you know you've succeeded. It's, yeah, it's well-written, the characters have done, like, it, it, it's not only well-written, but the characters are all very much themselves, right? Like, I can't view, I, I didn't view any characters in Arcane that I, like, uh, I didn't think they, they felt different from what I've read, or what I know about them. I think for what it was, they did them justice, everything was very well made, the soundtrack was phenomenal, the writing was great, the the art, everything about it was just solid. It's a very good, very good show. Well, Victor is... I don't really know where he's headed with the whole robot revolution thing, but, like, he was clearly... You like Victor more because of the show, put it that way. What is that about? I love when characters get more personality. I love when characters you enjoy get screen time, get movies, get series, get fucking artworks. Artworks are so sick with characters because it shows them doing something other than being animated in fucking MOBAs. It's so good. If all you know of a character is League of Legends, like say... If all we ever got was what we get in League, it's really good, but, like, you can expand on that so much. It, you could do so much with the characters you've created in games, man. You really can. It's fucking awesome. Well, Valorant lore is boring as shit because it doesn't fe There's nothing fantastical about it. It's too grounded, but, like, in a boring way. Valorant's just... It's a game. It's not a universe. They're trying to make it a universe, but it's so... It's like giving CSGO lore. Like... Okay. The one thing I will say, though, is Overwatch... Overwatch did it better, I think. Overwatch has more fantastical weird shit going on they got dwarves talking gorillas like a bunch of weird shit right that that's what makes it more interesting it does feel like a lesser overwatch yeah 
But, you know, if that's the game they wanted to go with, that's fine. Later on, they might make it more interesting and introduce non-human characters. And it's not that human characters are boring, it's just... The way Valorant works makes it boring. It is a CSGO clone. You don't play CSGO and think about the characters, you think about the gameplay. Right? There is no emphasis on individuality or, you know, a personality of one of the characters you're playing or none of that shit. It's just a genre game. There's like, there's no life in it. There is lore to CSGO. Yeah, but all I'm saying is it's as deep as that. And I'm sure it's dog shit. I missed. Thing is, though, who... Okay, let me ask you this. Who's gonna wake up and say, Man, the CSGO lore is amazing. I love CSGO lore. Nobody. Nobody. Zero people. Even if the lore is decent, it's fucking CSGO. Not a single soul in this planet, in this universe. Like, it's... It's a genre shooter. It's a genre game. It's not something you think about more than just a video game. That's all I'm saying. CSGO lore is just being real terrorism. That's what it is. I think the big thing with lore is, I don't know, I just love fantasy. I think anything to do with fantasy typically is good, you know? Don't throw away the classics, right? You gotta bring in some, some takes on elves, dwarves, orcs, pirates, whatever it may be, you know? Thankfully, League kind of, like, encompasses a lot of different things, so it's not boring. Well, you could say Lord of the Rings is... is everything. It's the inspiration behind most fantasy settings, period. Every every single thing someone writes about fantasy might have a root to Tolkien, right? Not entirely, but, you know, in some regard. It'll be a dark day when they do a horrible remake to Lord of the Rings, Oh Wait, The Hobbit Exists. Yeah, but that's not a remake of Lord of the Rings, that's just the book, The Hobbit, which they made into three movies, even though it's like one. They will remake The Lord of the Rings for current day audiences, and people will not like it. Because when you have established lore, and things people have loved and kept sacred for years and years and years and years... And then change it for for the current day appeasal. Doesn't come across as genuine, does it? The eighties Lord of the Rings cartoon wasn't it based on? It was just the movie, though, right? Didn't they have like live actors running around as well in there? It's kind of weird. Don't go full on Disney. Well, actually, you can kind of go... Well, going full on Disney is just... Like, no, full on Disney is shit. I'm not going to say anything about that, but like... Andor, Ahsoka... You talking about like the Disney remakes of uh, actual old movies? Andor was fucking amazing. Holy shit, Andor is a god tier. Double arm, thank you, man.
practice, bro. Go woke, go full woke to silence the 1% and anger 90% of the main audience. Listen, whatever they want to do in today's times to appease more people with remaking and changing up things, the classic will still be there. The original movie will still remain. Surely you would have killed one. I played Graves mid last game. I don't think I really enjoy Graves mid. I like Graves support more as full AP. You have to look, yeah, you do. It's his best combo. Well, they're making Snow White without dwarves and just a bunch of weird choices. And then of course, uh, the main chick who's playing Snow White is just a fucking bozo. And every time she speaks in an interview, it just gets worse. It's not even for, like, modern audiences. It's just for... It's for delusional people. Like, if you're gonna make dwarves not dwarves because of your reasons, that's not a modern audience, that's pure delusion. That's just what it is. Like, what modern audience looks at dwarves and says, Oh my god, how are they portraying short people like this? Bro, they're fantasy dwarves. They're folktale, fairy tale. They're not people with dwarfism. Like, that's just mental illness delusion. You know what I mean? If there was some sort of, like, logical reason, okay, maybe. But there isn't. Why name it Snow White if you hate everything about Snow White? Because they make they, they can make money off the name. Look at Scooby Doo, fucking what, what what's her name? Uh, whatever that fucking chick was who did the Scooby Doo show. It's the same thing. It's like they don't care about the source material. No, the the writer, the woman who was behind it. They don't care about the source material. They just take its name, rework it into whatever fucking abomination they want. That's it. It's money. Why come up with something original when you can just piggyback off the success of something else? That's what they did with Scooby-Doo. Witcher. I'm not really a fan of The Witcher. I guess I just haven't really been exposed to it. But... You know what's interesting, though, is... There are people out there who really want to make things who weren't the original creator, but they want to stay true to what the original was, you know? I think Dave Filoni is kind of like that with Star Wars, where he doesn't really... Like, he kind of wants to stay true to George's vision with some of this stuff, but... It's the people who kind of just come up with their own shit entirely that really makes it weird. I don't know, man. Well, original stories are great, and they can be part of universes, but don't try and change up a main part of the story to your liking, to your vision. If it's a main integral piece of history within that universe, why do you get the right to change it? Right? Write your own stories that can maybe surround it, as long as it doesn't completely put that up, you know, upside down, right? People are weird.
Well, I I'm kind of torn with the Rings of Power because I liked some stuff about it. I to be fair, I had COVID when I watched it, so it was good for that reason. I just binged the whole thing while being sick. But like, yeah, the Rings of Power again, it, a lot of... It wasn't, it's not true to lore, it's just, you know, some stuff was put in there to appease today's audiences, you know? But I will say this, the music was fucking amazing. Bear McCreary is a freak of nature, amazing music, perfect themes. And the Kazad Doom stuff was great. The Dwarven prosthetics, everything, it looked good. I like that. But, you know. It's... It is what it is. Lord of the Rings is great. I'm hoping Return to Moria is, like, top tier. I haven't seen House of Dragons. Ailstorm is fine. They're good. Thoughts on when they did Redcon? Retcon? Well, I'm not a big, like, super massive Silmarillion uh, knowledge base, you know, early Tolkien enjoyer. I love Lord of the Rings, but I'm not super deep into the older stuff. So I can't really give you my opinions, but like... I think as a viewing experience, as someone who isn't completely hardcore, it's okay. But if you're a hardcore, you know, super fan, I can completely understand the rage and frustrations as things just don't make sense. Th again, things were more designed to please more people instead of staying true to what it was. Like, if you want to talk Warhammer Fantasy, and then if you turn that shit upside down, I'll get pissed. But, that's because I know and love it more. You dare slack on my ship! 25 months. Let's go to Beto. Much love from Brazil, baby Jesus, baby Jesus. Dunk, thank you, man. Thank you, brother. I'm happy I never liked Lord of the Rings. What? Well, to be fair, it's either you get into Lord of the Rings from the books or the movies, right? Like, the movies brought it to the masses, but if you were around since, like, the time of the dinosaurs, it was the books. You know? God of War is good. I think God of War, for the most part, stayed very consistent and badass. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's their own egos. It, it's their head cannons. It's their head cannons, right? I can understand the idea behind. Oh my God, this would be so cool. I hope people would like it. I understand that, but at the same time, if it's established, why change it? If it's something people fell in love with, why do you think you have the right to change it? Because you think people will like your vision more than the original authors. Right? But again, I mean, that's not how that works. It's usually just, uh, appease more people, break the lore, whatever. I mean, you want to know something I'd add to Warhammer? Don't kill the fucking universe. That's what I would do. I'd go back in time and fucking retcon the end times and everyone's alive and they're thriving and there's a bigger threat coming than chaos. Like, who knows? Is that universe ended? Warhammer Fantasy's done. That is a dead universe. Well, a lot of things kind of start out, like, they can start out a little dull, and then over time they give them more character. 
that's fine. You know, maybe initially they didn't know what they wanted to do with the character, and as things progress, they figure it out. I don't see a problem in that. You know, it's cool when you can make nuanced and interesting characters out of the gate, but, like, sometimes you need character growth, right? Pension. Pickle, thank you, man. Bro, I don't know what's up with those Flash movies. Ezra Miller's a fucking weirdo, and, and Flash is boring. Superhero more, like, just like... Nah, brother. Nah, man. Shit is weird. He's dead. As, why did they even keep Ezra Miller? What a fucking weirdo that guy is, man. Oh my god. Freak show. Really weird. Like... Well, yeah, no shit. It's, we it's extremely inexcusable. I don't know. I guess the... Some executive liked the guy. Animation movies, those are... Oh, the animated stuff? Eh. I wouldn't really know. I don't think I've seen any. Not recently, at least. Thing is, though, I'm not really a fan of DC like I was before. And I don't think I've ever been a super fan of DC, or Marvel for that matter. I didn't grow up on the comics. But, like, I appreciate Batman. I like Batman. But do I like him enough to watch a lot of his content? Not really. Fuck no, I ain't watching no Flash show, or no Superman show. I don't care how good it is, I just don't like the characters. Your most hated lore change in anything. The End Times. Warhammer Fantasy is the End Times. They basically ended the world and killed everyone. Put it this way. You love League of Legends. League of Legends, all the characters you love. Tell me your main in chat right now. Who's your favorite character in League of Legends? Kha'Zix. No one likes Kha'Zix, bro. That's just you. Ezreal, Thresh, Corky, Yasuo, Varus, Yumi, Kogma, Twitch. I don't care, guys, because guess what? They're all fucking dead. Why do I care? They're all dead in the end times. There's no sequel. They're dead. I don't care. They're all dead. They don't get a sequel. They're gone. That's what the end times did, basically. The end times took League of Legends, all the characters, and they killed them. The bad guys won. Some of them lived. You know, some of them got reincarnated in the sequel. But if if let's just let's just say this. If League of Legends was to get Warhammer Fantasy End Times, there wouldn't be a single soul from Bilgewater who would be back. They're dead. They're legacy characters, they're gone. Twisted Fate and Graves are Adams, bro. They're not even like they're done. They're evaporated. Gangplank, blown to shit. Alawi, like... Maybe she could come back. But... Now. That's what it was. That's why I'm so pissed off. Because when you have a universe that's so well established, and that has been so... progressed over the years, tons of books, character developments, new miniatures, anything you can think of to make these characters the focal point, of the universe. And then they're like, oh, we got no money. This shit ain't bringing us bank. Let's kill it and redo it. It was a business decision to kill off some of the coolest shit ever.
Let me guess, was Warhammer owned by Blizzard? Nope. Well, here's the funny thing about Warhammer Fantasy. So Warhammer Fantasy, it died. Not many people were playing it. There wasn't advancements in lore. It just wasn't making money and they couldn't trademark it because it was very Tolkien-inspired, right? They killed the universe. They then made the sequel, Age of Sigmar, which is the successor to fantasy. It's basically what happens after the world's destroyed. The gods are still there. You know, some of the characters have been elevated to even crazier positions in, in the universe. Whatever it may be, right? Um, and then years and years and years after fantasy's been dead and Age of Sigmar's taken over, a company puts out the greatest Warhammer fantasy video game ever made, and then Games Workshop, the people who killed fantasy, are like, wait, we fucked up. We actually really fucked up, and we could have made this so much better, instead of axing it right out of the gate, you know, when it was going downhill. And, um, they brought the game back. So, what can you do? Oh, that was the biggest, th that's like the worst thing they've done. That was the most egregious. They did not retcon the end of the universe. Nope. The world died. So, Warhammer Fantasy coming back is... It's gonna be like this, the prequel to what happened at the end of the world. It's gonna take place a few hundred years before the world ended. Uh, a fresher timeline. And that's it. So just imagine this. Imagine them doing that to League of Legends and all the characters you love. You can no longer play them. They're no longer getting stories. They're no longer being written about. They're all dead. And all these new characters are being made in their place. No more League Pog! Yeah, it's like a huge betrayal. League right now. Okay, chill. It's not that bad. You know, I guess with character reworks, you could think of it that way, but, like, at least the character still is there. They weren't there before in fantasy. They're gone. Ouch! Riot deleting all the cool characters and releasing them with big titty anime children? Okay, stop typing, please. There was one trick Pony of Rengar before his rework. And his Q is a skill shot, play him didn't... I mean... Characters change. Characters change typically... I think most of the reworks in this game were actually quite well. Like, they were good. Like, I don't see anyone complaining about Urgot. I don't see people complaining about Scion. I think the most egregious that people didn't like was uh, Aatrox. Right? I think that's about it. Every other rework seems to have been fucking amazing. You know, Graves, it makes sense to where he is now, where he's got a shotgun, two shells, you're reloading, shit like that, but... Of course we all miss, um... The ADC Graves. Like, that's the coolest one. Oops. I kind of trolled. Oh, he's dead. Swain rework was really damn good. Because the thing is about these characters getting reworks, is it's not only their kit, it's their lore, it's their their personality, it's... Everything about them just seems to get better and better.
it's good stuff. It is. Because, well, uh, I can say this with, like, hi high regard and, oh my god, it's the best thing, whatever. But that's just because I love it the most. League of Legends, I don't like the MOBA compared to the lore, compared to the characters, compared to the regions. I love the universe of League. The MOBA, to me, is the secondary portion at this point. Like, I know you play the game and the MOBA's at the forefront, but for me, it's like, bro, the characters, they're cool.